One of Laravel's most popular features and maybe one of its most misunderstood features as well is definitely facades. If you have ever worked with Laravel, you've seen them at some point, and what they do is they add some syntax sugar on top of how you call your objects. For example, if you were to dispatch a job to your queue, you might call the queue facade and then call this static dispatch method. And the static method really can be any method available within the object but they're not available through a static context. So for example, if you have a full class with a bar method, note that the method is not static. Facades would allow you to do something like this, call a full facade and then call this bar method statically. As you can see, this is, I would say, a more terse approach on how to call a method. It looks better. You don't really have to instantiate anything. It looks clean. It looks good. So you have this added developer experience layer. You have the syntax sugar on how you call objects. Now, facades in Laravel are really just static proxies. So we're calling this bar method on this full facade. And all it's doing is really just redirecting that call to an underlying object. It's proxying that call. Laravel's implementation of a side is obviously a little bit more complex than that because it allows you to do things like mocking that facade so you could do something like foo facade and you could either swap it through to another instance of a given class etc 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 so it has those helpers it, it is a little bit more complex than what we're going to build on this lesson but it's pretty much that you're you are forwarding calls to an underlying object now the reason i'm talking about facades now is because over the last few lessons we built a dependency injection container and facades are directly related to a dependency injection container. So just to explain how facades work, when you do something like this in Laravel or something like this, what's really happening behind the scenes is when you call the dispatch method on the queue facade, it is internally fetching the queue dependency through the container and then calling the dispatch method on the resolved object. So it is a two-step process. It first fetches whatever it needs from the container and then it calls the method that you had called statically on that object. So for this lesson, I've created three files. I've created a facade file, which is going to be the main class that we're gonna extend from. I've created the Twilio class, which is our Twilio implementation. And all it requires is an API key to be instantiated. We can call the message method to add a message. And then we can call the send message that just spits out a string saying that we send message something using a certain API key. And then the Twilio facade class just extends the base facade class. So what we want to do is this. We want to be able to call this Twilio facade, call this message method statically, and then call send. Right now, for us to do this, we would have to first instantiate Twilio, like this. And then we will be able to call the message method here, and then call send. If we were to run this, we can see we get the desired result, but we want to do this using a facade. So let's remove this. Let's uncomment what we have and let's start playing with this. Obviously, if I run this, it is going to fail. We're calling a method that does not exist. All right, so like I said, for a facade to work, it must first fetch an object from the container. So that's gotta be defined on the facade that we're working with. For example, on Laravel, this is called the get facade accessor method. That's where you let it know which container service it should pick. For our version of this, we're gonna call it definition. So let's go here and we're going to create a static function called definition, which is going to return a string. And for now, let's just return the fully qualified namespace for our Twilio implementation. Let's run our test file. This could have been a, an automated task, but we're going to talk about that later. So we still get the same error because we really haven't... Actually, this method does not exist on this Twilio facade object. When you're dealing with facades, not, none of the methods you call really exist. They're all static proxies. So for us to implement this, we're going to use a PHP magic method called call static. If you don't know what magic methods are, I highly suggest you look them up on the documentation. Let's create a static function called call static. And this method expects two arguments. The first one is the method we're calling, sorry, and then the args like this. And what this does is every time that we call a static method that does not exist within the class, it's going to fall back into this method. So for example, let's do a var dump. We're going to dump the method and then we're going to exit. Let's see what happens. All right. So we see that we got the message method call. Since it doesn't exist within this class, it is going to 
be redirected into this function, this method, and then we can do whatever we want with it. All right, let's get rid of this. So what do we want to do? We want to fetch something from the container, and then we want to call a method with the arguments we were given. This is pretty simple, right? If you've seen the container lessons, you know how to call the container. So we could say like container is going to be container get instance. So we now have an instance of the container. To fetch the object, we're going to call it resolved service. We're going to say container get. We want to get something from the container. And it is the definition. Remember that we defined the definition right here. This is what we want. So we can say static definition. And you notice this method does not exist on the parent class. We're going to address that shortly. Okay, we have the resolved service. And now we can simply call the resolved service. We want to call the method we were given and we want to pass the arguments. If you're not familiar with the syntax, this is the spread operator. So we're getting those arguments as an array and we're passing them as separate parameters. So if your method expected, for example, method expected arc one, arc two, arc three, and you had an array with those three arguments, if you were to pass it to this method, you would only be failing argument one. If you use the spread operator though, you spread it across many arguments, right? Simple enough, right? Let's try this. Hmm. Okay, so we got in there and that was intentional. So the problem here is our Twilio class expects an API key, right? But uh, since we haven't manually registered within the container, the DI container can figure out this dependency, it doesn't know what to inject here. So in those situations where you have dependencies that require to be manually registered, you just have to register it on the container first. And that's what Laravel does. So we want to fetch an instance of the container. We want to register. Uh, we're going to pass the fully qualified namespace as well. And it is going to return a closure, which just returns a new object with our API key like this. Let's write this now. Okay, so now it's working. Now we have our static prox properly working. If you dig the Laravel source, you're probably going to find that sometimes it doesn't use the fully qualified namespace. So let's replace this with Twilio, like just a regular string. On the facade, if we run this, it isn't going to work because we don't have that service. So uh, let's replace this with Twilio as well. Remember that a full, when you do Twilio class, this is just a string. It's the fully qualified namespace, but it's a regular string like any other. Let's run this. Okay, it's passing again. And that's it. We have a static proxy working. Now, one thing that we need to resolve, though, is we have this definition method. It only exists on the child class. So if you look at the Laravel source, what Laravel does is it implements this method on the parent class like this, but it, it throws an exception. So please implement definition method. Something like this. And if we run this, it is still going to work. But if for some reason we were to remove this from this class, we now get an exception. Another way you could handle this is you could make this an abstract class. You can make this an abstract function. So you want a public static abstract function that's lengthy. And you want to call it definition, which is going to return a string like this. Okay, it's abstract public static function, not the other way around. And then on your child class, if I were to remove this, PHP Swarm would complain that I'm missing um, one of the methods that need to be declared. So if we add this again and we run it, it's working. If we remove it, we get uh, a fatal error because we're extending an abstract class that requires us to implement this definition method but we don't really have it. With that said, let's uh, revert to the other implementation just to be close to Laravel. Let's inline this. Thank you, PHP Storm, to keep things simpler. If we run this, um, it still passes. So that's how you can build a static proxy. It's simple as that. So when you see facades in Laravel, that's all it's doing. Of course, Laravel facades have more features, so it is more complex. But when you call, for example, bus, Q or Q something, that's all it's doing. It's fetching an object from the container and then calling the method that you called statically a syntax sugar, 
as a regular object method call. Okay, I hope this video was helpful and make sure to leave a like, leave a comment if you have any doubts or any suggestions of content. Also make sure to drop those in the comments and I see you guys on the next video.